Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you're joining us. Welcome to the favorite food extravaganza brought to you by Generation Africa and the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, AGRA. Now today, we are going to showcase and highlight exciting aspects of the food that we eat every day. And uh, without further ado, I'd just like to call upon Dixon Naftali to just give a little bit of context of who these session organizers are. So Dixon, please tell us a bit about Generation Africa. Over to you. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, good morning, good evening, depending on where you, you are. Uh, today is not a day of uh, many speeches or opening remarks, but I would like to just introduce people to Generation Africa very quickly and what we do. Yeah, so we are a platform that uh, tries to strengthen the ecosystem of young entrepreneurs. Um, our hashtag is uh, Grow Agripreneurs and um, transform food. And we do this by inspiring more agripreneurs to join the food systems uh, through competitions like the Go-Getters and the Pitch AgriHack. Uh, we try to offer curation of relevant content and uh, support services to the high potential SMEs who are our members of our Go-Getters community. Uh, we advocate to bring the voices of young agripreneurs uh, to the table of decision makers, influencers, and policy makers. Uh, we also identify areas of support in the countries uh, for the youth uh, using a model we call the Youth Ecosystem Development Framework. And like I promised, that's it about Generation Africa. Um, today, you will enjoy yourself. Uh, I think we have uh, Africa's best. Uh, who are our go-getters, uh, finalists, we call them Africa's best. We have the privilege of uh, the greatest food moderators, uh, Paul Newnam himself and uh, Chef Ali Mantri. Uh, I can see even Divine and Tokyo is here, you know, the founder of uh, Climate Smart Agriculture Youth Network. So without further ado, uh, we are doing this in collaboration with our host, uh, Agra, and I'll welcome uh, Vanessa Adam, the Strategic uh, Partnerships uh, Director at Agra to say a word. Welcome, Vanessa. Good morning, good afternoon, and I am so, so pleased to be here with all of you today. This is just so exciting and um, we have uh, such a great body of uh, and community of youth entrepreneurs, youth voices, uh, chefs, and um, passionate, die-hard, uh, committed people, committed to zero hunger, committed to sourcing from smallholders, and committed to transformation on the continent and across the world. I'm actually in New York this week, and I'm so excited. Um, because the Food System Summit, which we have tagged this event to be a part of, uh, has still today um, presidents and prime ministers and corporate leaders from around the world speaking about their commitments to food systems transformation. But as usual, nobody can speak on behalf of the youth and the power of the, your voices and the power of your vision is what is the future of our world. And, as I personally um, uh, uh, think about my favorite food and the meaning of food in my culture and my community, it's absolutely something which is embedded in how we live, who we are, how we see the world. And those of you who know me know that I love to buy food for people. I love to sit around a table and share my food. And I always feel sad when I can't share my food with others. So. I think for me, this is about us sharing food and sharing a conversation about our passion for food, how we think about our food preparation, how we think about the people who grow our food and who's going to eat it. And then how we can also use food as a source of health and wealth and prosperity. So that's really about our vision and a community around food. And I hope this becomes a regular um, rendezvous maybe once a month once a quarter we can gather and talk about how much food is important to all of our lives and also to the continent in Africa so I'm so pleased to be here 
and um, Amanda and Dixon and Paul and Chef Ali and all of you for joining uh, today. And I hope you're busy tweeting and what I call a tweet storm so that we can really create all the, the, the necessary visibility. Of course, you all prefer Instagram. I know I'm old fashioned, I've been told. So I'm even on Facebook, Shh, don't tell anyone. All right. Have a great uh, meal, enjoy your food. And I just wanted to say I brought also my favorite bagel sandwich with smoked salmon, avocado, tomato, and onions and capers. And I will be enjoying it throughout this discussion. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Vanessa. You have let our little secret out of the bag, but um, I actually really love salmon. Um, and I see people are joining us and I see comments in the chat box. Welcome everyone. We are a year and a half, close to two years into the pandemic. So I think we are used to the webinar uh, culture. So as per usual, please when you join, mute yourself, um, interact with us via the chat. And then um, the hashtag is favorite food. Uh, Vanessa highlighted that it's UK spelling. Um, but yeah, please feel free to post a picture of what you're having, what you envision to have, what you're cooking, what's your favorite meal, and let's interact on social media. So um, as preempted by Vanessa, I'd like to introduce our moderators for this particular session. And they say charity begins at home. I'll start off with uh, one of our moderators who comes from my hometown and makes me very nostalgic whenever I, I talk about him. And I have a few items here that we'll talk about uh, that come from our home area, Maluyu. Uh -huh. And he is Chef Ali Mandi. He's a world-renowned chef. He's a TV host. He's a producer. He's a writer. He is also an advocate for good food for all. And if that's not enough, this man is under 35. Yet he has managed to accomplish the following. He's the first African chef to win the International Hall of Fame Awards. I'm not done. He's also among the top five reigning chefs of African cuisine in Africa. I hope you're not too awe-stricken because I'm still going on with his profile. He's also considered the top male chef in Africa by DSTV. He's Kenya's chef's global ambassador, and he has filmed his own cookery show with over 150 episodes. And on his social media channels, he champions local foods by sharing recipes and different ways of preparing healthy, yummy, delicious food. And he's also an EFAD advocate and chef's manifesto champion. This is none other than Chef Ali Mandri. Welcome, Chef Ali. And his co-moderator will be none other than Paul Newman, who is the one who gifted me this lovely, good for all, Good food for all t-shirt. And yes, we are twinning today. And he's equally decorated. Um, Paul Newman is the director of SDG2 Advocacy Hub, which is a secretariat convened to connect NGOs, advocacy groups, civil society, private sector. And it has facilitated a network of over a thousand chefs to support their action on sustainability development goals through a vehicle they call the Chef's Manifesto. Paul leads the Food for All campaign, being driven by the good UN Food Systems Summit and to drive public engagement via an engaging social media campaign, just like what we are doing right now. So Paul, welcome very much, and we are glad to have you and Chef Ali moderate. So I think I'll leave the two of you to take on the show, not unless you have anything else for me before I leave you. 
Well, thank you so much, Amanda. And it's so great to be here with Chef Ali. Um, thank you so much to uh, Generation Africa, to Agra for bringing this conversation together. And for, I, I think really um, believing in the voices of young people and the importance of giving them a, a, a platform and a space to really lead the conversation. And so it's so great. Amanda, turn your camera back on. I wanted to see what that food was that you have. We're talking about, we're talking about favorite foods and good food. And you mentioned something there that you said was connected you back. You said Chef Ali is connecting me back to my roots, my, my hometown. So I want to know what this food is. And then I'm going to get Ali and you just to say a couple of words about it. But you tell us, what have you got there? Okay, so I know Ali's chef is, is going to host the Mombasa Foodies Festival this weekend. And this mm -hmm. is a local delicacy um, called Mabuyu. And it's actual baobab seed that is uh, dipped in food color. And then sometimes it can be spiced with something a bit chilly or zesty, or it can be sweetened. So uh, Chef Ali will know, uh, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just slightly differ to my local language. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Then I have dates. Um, also another delicacy at the coast. So this is not a full meal, this is a snack. I wanted it to be easy for me to just show it to, to the, uh, like show it on screen. So these are cakes. Uh, in Swahili, we call them tende. Uh, and fruits, because I really love fruits. And, and Paul, I know you know this. So yeah, so that's just a depiction of where I'm from and what we like eating. Fantastic. I think that has been amazing. Thank you so much, um, Amanda, for the lovely intro. I really appreciate. And again, the Mabuyu takes me back, you know, like my childhood feel at the end of the day. You know, it's, it's what you buy when you're coming out from school. It's a lovely snack. And talking about baobab is super healthy. It really helps with the, you know, uh, the system at the end of the day. Sometimes you get a little bit constipated. When you eat that Mabuyu, it's definitely going to work miracles. So it's basically an ingredient that's very important. And uh, again, it's really good for the diet. So we never knew all this when we were kids. We're just enjoying it as a lovely snack. But then it is just work wonders and it is amazing. And the tender, definitely, this is basically uh, when you come from Mombasa, we are, we are uh, colonized definitely by the pretty British. And then definitely the Omanis came down. So a little bit of the Arab and the Swahili mixture at the end of the day brought in that tende. Because tende is basically a staple that used to be... Uh, a favorite meal for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and uh, he was literally having that in the morning with a glass of water and it's believed to nourish your day. It's basically like a meal on its own and super healthy and very good for your, for your body as well. So you had amazing uh, products out there that's basically really representing Mombasa and uh, how healthy and nourished you are. Sounds good. Wow. And this is what, thank you, Amanda. Okay, well, Chef Ali, this is what I love about food. So we're gonna have a conversation today um, around favorite foods and why. And I think, you know, we've already just started where food is connected to place and the space that you're from. So like Amanda was just sharing about, you know, her, her food coming from where she's from and, and some of her favorites, but you were then talking about the memories and childhood. And I think, you know, when we talk about good food, um, it has so many layers to it. And I think this is really, really critical for us as we kind of uh, engage in this. So, you know, um, as we're, I'm, I'm going to ask you just a quick question, but in the chat, if you are on, I see a few people have shared where they're dialing in from. Feel free to put in where you're dialing in from. Um, it's great to see, you know, Francis from South Sudan. We've got Walter in Kasumu. There's lots of people here. So if you guys, uh, we've got Nambia. Let's see how many countries we've got across Africa and around the world. I think somebody was from Italy. Um, so, uh, Ali, where are you dialing in from? You're, you're, you, you were just telling me just before that you're on the, the roof of your Great. family home. Great. So I'm actually dialing in from Mombasa. This is where I was born. So this is the house where I was born. And on Fridays, we normally come to our our family home. So this is basically my great grandmother's place and my grandma is still here, my mom, my dad. And on Friday, everybody meets here. So since it's a Friday and I had this amazing, amazing session to do, I'm like, okay, there's no other amazing place to do it. I'm just gonna go home at the rooftop because right now down 
at basically the apartments. The kids are all over. It's super noisy, but it's basically a Friday. And it's like one of the best days that people definitely meet down in Mombasa. It's like, it's like a holiday, you know, at the end of the day. So I'm like, I'm, the best place is going to be rooftop. And this yeah. just brought a lot of memories because it's been like four to five years I haven't been in this rooftop. I'm probably just coming to see my mom and my dad and I basically do my things. But again, thanks to this call, I'm basically impressed to be able to be here. And I just feel so good. Like the weather is just amazing. And it feels really good to connect with you guys while I'm actually at my rooftop. This is the place yeah. where I was born. Well, well, today it's great to see people um, introducing themselves in the chat. We've got people from Cameroon, from Kenya, lots of different places coming in. So keep, keep introducing yourself. So um, what we would love also is if uh, you do have a meal right now and you're eating something in your house, take a, take a snap, post it on social media with the hashtag good food for all with the number four, and we'll drop that into the chat and then favorite food and tag Agro Alliance and Go Gex Africa. Um, and we'll drop all this in the chat so you guys can um, have it there. But if you can show us what you're eating from the part of the world you're in, because I think one of the things we've been, uh, yesterday was this historic summit, the UN Food System Summit um, that was held and many member states, including, and I, 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 when I was talking to you, Chef Ali, the, the president from Kenya was on, um, making commitments, presidents from all around the world and prime ministers making commitments around food systems. But one of the things around our food systems is that we can all make choices. We can all do things. And, and we've launched this Good Food for All campaign, which really tries to highlight the power of food and ask people to have you know, healthy and climate friendly meals and really um, support everyday actions through that. And so we're, we're, we're gonna have a conversation today about food because food is so personal. And also, you know, what's good for you what you love, Ali, is going to be connected to where you're from, your story, your, mm -hmm. your, your, your faith, your religion, your history, your parents, like so many things. Um, and, and, and this is great. You know, we, I, I, what I love about food is that you learn about people, you learn about places, you learn about ingredients. But I also, you, you can learn about the, the benefits that it brings. And I know you've engaged with farmers and seen some of the benefits for farmers, but you've also seen some of the benefits from a health perspective. And so we're going to have a bit of a conversation, but we're going to talk about food. And um, we've got a couple of amazing panels uh, where we've got um, some real am amazing friends that are going to join us. And we're going to talk a little bit about local dishes, culture, um, and, 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 and heritage. So it's going to be a bit of a, a, bit of a, a whirlwind, um, but what we might do is just dive straight in with our first panel. Um, and so I'm going to ask um, uh, our first panel to come on. Um, and so we have, uh, let's see if we can spotlight them. Um, so we've got Tracy, uh, we've got uh, Killy, we've got uh, Jacinta, and then we've got uh, Shimimama. Yeah. Let's see. Shini Mia. Oh, wow. I love this. Hi, guys. Love it. Okay. We're, we're getting you guys all spotlighted. So come on in. And then what would be awesome is if you guys oh, could. The buffet today. It's going to be a virtual buffet. It's a virtual buffet. It's a tour <laughs> around the world. So we're, we've got people dialing in from, from, from Kenya, from Mali. Uh, from Rwanda. Love this. Okay, so uh, let's let's just start with introductions um, for our guests. So, um, if you could each uh, just introduce yourself, where you're from, where you're dialing in from, and then we can get started. So, um, who wants to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. Perfect. Hi, <laughs> Hi Tracy. Yeah, Tracy Kimafi. I'm from Kenya. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to tell you a bit about our cultural foods and what we enjoy here in Kenya. Awesome. Welcome. Welcome, Tracy. Who, Welcome, Kamei, Tracy. Okay, who wants to jump in next? I think I'll go next. Yes. Um, I would say. Can I go on? Yes, please. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning and good afternoon. Then good evening. 
Well, my name is Chiniman Alexander from Rwanda. And, uh, I'm so excited to be part of uh, this session and uh, I'll be glad to share my favorite traditional food as well. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, Jacinta. Welcome. Alexander. Awesome. Hello. Hi. Uh, I th I'm really excited about uh, those the events because one I really love food because I think <laughs> food is food is a way of experiencing the world you know sometimes you can't travel but you can taste something from somewhere else which is a really good thing and it's something I'm looking forward to sharing about awesome no and 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 at a time with the pandemic as well when we've not been able to travel I think that's really interesting Jacinta because we can have a food tour or a food experience, or we can uh, see what see what see what things are like, and it's and it's really good. Well, um, Ali, should we find out a bit more about the food that people have, and um, let's dive in, huh? Definitely. So um, the staple, the staple. I think I think Tracy must have something that's basically from uh, Kenya, which is a popular dish. We're talking about probably ugali, gideri. These are like basically, when I talk about gideri, gideri is like a popular, a popular kikuyu meal. And it's a combination of uh, a corn, whole corns, a little bit of some uh, red kidney beans in the mix, uh, a little bit of some potatoes. Some people like warubi, basically potatoes, you call them, or you cut them a little bit in the mix and then uh, cook them up together with a little bit of any of your favorite seasoning. Sometimes you go a little bit more uh, fancier with some uh, tomato sauce into the mix, some tomato, some onion, some garlic to make it a bit more fancier. And it is a staple. And uh, when we talk about uh, kid red kidney beans, uh, you know, these are basically part of the future 50 foods and uh, it is a staple in the country. So apart from ugali, which is again, a little bit scarce right now, there is a lot of uh, ingredients which are sustainable that we can have in the country and are our staples and we enjoy them every single day. Yeah, absolutely. So Tracy, do you want to show us what you've got there? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any food here, but I tweeted Ugali and Yamachoma. I mean, I think Chef Ali knows Kenyans very, very well. <laughs> uh, so Gali again is this maize that has been ground up and then you just literally put hot water and then it becomes this clump mm. of food. Not many people love it, but if you're Kenyan, you know how to taste it you know how to pair it with kachumbai with meat with you know traditional mm -hmm. vegetables but one thing that a lot of people don't know is pilau so there's a lot of jollof wars whether Ghanaian yeah. jollof or nigerian jollof <laughs> nobody told you about pilau which is an east african exactly. dish specially made where shafali is coming from and that outweighs any jollof um you know, disruption that goes on. So those are my two favorite meals. It's ugali and yamachoma. And yamachoma is basically meat that's been grilled. Uh, the South Africans call it brine, but we call it yamachoma because it's choma. It's like grilled meat. And then pilau, which wins the jollof, you know, war. We take the jollof war with pilau. Thank you, guys. I, simplest, I would say the simplest jollof ever, but very delicious. It's not as colorful, but it can be made with, the pilau can be made with a little bit of some beef. It can be made with veggies. It can be made with chicken, fish. It's basically out of this world. And again, when you just mentioned about the uh, jollof wars, at the end of the day, we did, we did something with Google and it was really, really huge where I went head to head with, uh, with uh, a chef from Nigeria who was really saying that jollof is basically the best ever rice. And I did my simplest uh, pilau which was super simple to make and everyone was like blown off like oh my god we don't even need tomatoes in the mix so uh, it really uh, depends how simple it is to make because every single day everyone gets busy so at the end of the day you want the simplest ever recipe to be able to make a dish but still make it delicious so again uh, Tim Pilau thank you so much Tracy for bringing this up I think it is it is amazing and uh, yeah, uh, again, Ugali, what, what, what is Kenya without Ugali? We love our Ugali, but again, we, we have to also uh, accept the fact that the corn are basically the maize meal right now is getting scarce. 
and uh, it is basically uh, we need to look into sustainable kind of ingredients that would be able to have so that everyone can be able to we can be able to feed everybody at the end of the day so we yeah. have a lot of options like sorghum we have you know a lot of uh, um, uh, brown rice that can be at the end of the day be a substitute and also we can make uh, ugali out of uh, tapioca which is a uh, uh, muhogo, we call it unga muhogo, this is the cassava, and there are many options just in case uh, we don't get the uh, ugali flour in the market. So we need to be prepared. But at the end of the day, it is a staple that we love. Uh, Tracy just say that it's basically served with kachumbari. Kachumbari is like a salsa, a, a Kenyan salsa. It's a combination of tomatoes, onions, it's very vegetarian. Tomato, onions, a little bit of some coriander in the mix, a touch of uh, uh, lemon or lime juice, a little bit of some salt and some green chilies. Goodness, you're gonna have the ugali with that and a little bit of some meat if you want, or just have it like that. It's just amazing. It's amazing. No, this is great. And I mean, I think, you know, that conversation, as you were saying, there's all different types of food and they have all different um, messages. So it's, it's really, really good. Let's um, hear from one of our other panelists um, who wants to show us what they've got okay. or talk to us about their food. I think I'll go on. Okay. Uh, okay. I have, I can't, I can't really like raise it up because it's liquidy. <laughs> I have uh, coconut curry beans and, uh, and a brown chapati. <laughs> I think I saw it on Twitter just now. Yeah, I just posted it because I can't lift it up, but it's easy if I just take a picture. It looks amazing. So if you go on Twitter, yeah. check it out. It looks amazing. Yeah, so uh, I incorporated some, some millet into my brown chapati because... Uh, Wheat, I think wheat is just plain. And I think uh, the manufacturers really strip a lot from processing when they're processing wheat. So I just added some, some ground uh, millet and sorghum, just a little bit for a bit, a bit of flavor and color for, to the brownness. Yeah. Wow. That's interesting. That's going to be such a delicious chapati, which is healthy at the end of the day. I'm going to try that. I'm going to put my sorghum flour into the mix and make my brown chapati because all I have right now is brown chapatis and uh, I can't have any extra oil in the mix. So that's basically, I, I believe that is dry brown chapati with a little bit of some sorghum in the mix. And that is just genius. I'm going to steal that recipe to center. Keep, on your, keep your eye on me. Make sure you. Make sure I will. You. Make Thank sure you. Ali, you tag her in that, that recipe, you know. I'll give her that. I'll give her credit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome because I think Chef Ali's biryani recipe is one of my go-to ones. Uh, uh, I would recommend it to anyone. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jacinta. You're awesome. And that curry that you have, that coconut curry, what else did you put in the mix? Um, because that sounded like borohoa to me, like the green grams cooked with some coconut or maybe a little bit of some, um, um, uh, did you put any uh, grain in the mix or is it basically just coconut and uh, a protein? No, it's just uh, coconut cream, beans and the curry. I Normally I do that with uh, dengu, but I couldn't find it in time. <laughs> yeah, so I went it's with beans be instead. When you say dengu, you mean the green grams? Oh yeah, the <laughs> Not the green grams. Fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. So readily available in the country. It's part of the future 50 foods and uh, it, is, it, is, it is amazing. It's basically a diet that you can just have. I would have the green grams cooked in coconut uh, with a little bit of some garlic and ginger. Just make a lovely borohoa. We call it borohoa. At the, it's basically a name or when you call it a curry in Mombasa. And I will have that with that brown chapati. And oh my God, my day is going to be done. I've had I have forgotten you guys call dengue pojo and... It's yes. so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. We call it pojo. Green grams, we call it pojo. And the yellow ones, we call them dengu. And the yellow ones are the lentils. So it really depends where you come from or what part of Kenya you come from. Everybody has their own names for ingredients. But as long as we can have them and they're available and they're sustainable, let's do this. <laughs> this is great. I, I love also just seeing in the chat, different people are sharing different ingredients that you can add in. And I think, you know, diversity is really key in dishes. And, um, you know, trying to build more biodiversity gives us more nutrients, which gives us, you know, um, makes it more healthy, but also more sustainable. 
And so, you know, it encourages and finds that market for farmers. And I think this is really important. Let's, 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 let's grow across to Rwanda. Um, so let's uh, hear, what have you got in Rwanda there? Thank you. Just prepared something here with me. Uh, this is uh, the avocado. Then this is a kind of a curry. Yes. Yeah. So this is a kind of curry from uh, whole wheat grain flour. Then these are a mixture of uh, different vegetables. So um, this one, it is a instead of uh, boiling uh, the flour into the, the water. We just uh, use the water at room temperature, and then we steam. So after we, we make dough, we just steam it. We don't just make it uh, in a hot water. Just we steam the dough, and then it comes hard. And uh, that's what kept the 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 ancestors moving uh, wrong distances. So if you want to have a, a wrong distance trip, you make sure you eat this one, and you will be charged for whole day. And the, uh, the other side, I'm a vegetarian, and the, the Aroko, uh, we call it uh, Umusima, the one that uh, I just read. Then, avocado so much. Avocados have changed my life. Being vegetables, being my my only way, because I'm a 100% vegetable. Awesome, awesome. Ali, mm -hmm. any questions? I love that. I think I think that's basically amazing. We call that brown ugali. It's very delicious. It is popular up country, and uh, people have it. It's a healthier version of uh, of uh, ugali, which at the end of the day, it is even uh, more available than uh, the uh, like what what I understand. Like you know, people. What I always say is that people don't see the fact that you know when we go deeper into. Uh, the world and sustainability, we understand that there is a problem somewhere. But then when, if, if the entire country right now would decide they're going to eat brown ugali, oh my God, the world is going to be an amazing place at the end of the day because we'll be able to balance and uh, everyone, everybody will be able to enjoy ugali every single day. But as of now, as we fight for zero hunger, we definitely need to look into this. And I, I'm probably that person that's shouting out right now that, hey, corn is getting scarce. That's definitely the maize meal is getting scarce and still people don't feel it, but then we go deeper, we understand. So it is important to basically get a little bit diverse and learn to eat different kind of things than just the staple that we love. The Ugali. Right. Well, thank you guys. I really appreciate you coming in and sharing. We've learned so much about just the different foods and the different ingredients and, and, and even just a conversation and I think you know one of the things that I love about food is that it connects and there's so many different ways like even just one dish you can enjoy it one way somebody else can enjoy it another way we can add different ingredients we can substitute and I think this is really really um, awesome and I think you know from a from a food system perspective this is really critical because what it does is also you know even those diverse ingredients that you add each one, it helps to, in the biodiversity in the farm, um, it helps in the market, you know, for, for the entrepreneurs that are doing these different ingredients, but it also helps stimulate people to just be a bit more adventurous in their food, to not always eat the exact same, but to also try some different things that are more sustainable and, and healthier. Fantastic. I think there is someone we haven't heard from, and this is the Philly, Philly Kata from Mali. Uh, she's the founder okay. and of Agro Women. I can see her here. Hi, Philly. How you doing? Hi, I'm well, and you? Fine, thank well, you. Well. Good evening. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about our traditional food. So in Mali here, so we make traditional food like to, so which is made with millet uh, and used with uh, okra sauce. And we have also wijila, we have uh, laro. So this is made with uh, maize. So we have a diverse food range and I invite you to come and enjoy it with us. And today I have bring something special. Uh, 
So this is uh, okra sauce that we can we can eat with that we can eat with rice. Nice. Yes. And we have also dried fish. And it's wow. very tasty and I, I love it. And I invite you to try this. All right. Thank so, you. That that yes. looks like uh like green grams. Is it is it um is it a um is it part of uh like um the family of the green grams or is it different? Oh that's okra. Okra, okay. Yes, okra. So that's okra, yes, that's okra. okra. right? I didn't get the question. Um, the, the curry that you just showed over the rice, what's the main okay. ingredient? What's the main ingredient? The main ingredient is okra. Okra, okra and lady dried finger. Yes. Yes. Lady finger, right? Love that. It's amazing. Okay. Love so that. The red, yes, the red one is, uh, uh, so this is that something that we, we eat with it. So it's, uh, I don't know how to say this in English. Uh, Pima, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. Is there, can <laughs> I ask a question, uh, Philly? Is, is okra available all year round or is it at certain seasons? Like what happens around seasons? Do you change the ingredients? Yes. So we have different seasons here. So uh, in Kati, it's mostly produced. I'm living in a plural area in Kati, so uh, vegetable growing is the major activities that people are doing here. So we grow several okra during the, uh, the harvesting time. And Great. we it. Wow, that's amazing. Well, 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 thank you. Thank you um, to all of our, our initial panelists. We're going to bring in another panel, I think, Ali, yeah, um, and, and keep talking. Um, but thank you. Please do share these, these images on uh, social media. Do a tweet with them using Good Food for All okay. and um, Favourite Foods. Um, we really want to thank see you. these recipes and these ingredients because it's just amazing to hear the differences in different parts of uh, Africa and different countries, different regions. And it's good just to see, because we can all learn from one another. We can learn about what's uh, something else we should try and what comes out in this season or what maybe is a little more healthy or a little more sustainable. And I think this is really, really important. And um, Ali, there's lots of recipe ideas here that we can talk to everyone about. Definitely. Oh my God, like the okra. Oh my God, it's, it's readily available. Like we get it every single day in Mombasa. And it is an ingredient that a lot of people have kind of like, you know, probably avoided because it's sticky and uh, uh, you just need to learn how to make it well. At the end of the day, you probably just don't want to make a curry, which probably would look sticky and you'll be like, no. So I, I found amazing ways of making uh, okra, like I'll spice them a little bit, uh, marinate them a little bit, and then I'll stick them into the oven. You remove them. Oh, my God, it's like you're, you're having a uh, uh, okra chips, which are delicious and at the end of the day, healthy. So it's just fantastic. So there are many ways of making these ingredients that are a little bit ignored or a little, a little bit disliked. So I love that. And I was really happy to see the okra being made as a step four in Mali. Awesome. Well, Chef Ali, we're going to, time is flying. So we need to um, just bring uh, in our next panel. Um, and so let's bring yes. them up on stage. Uh, so we've, we've, we've got another great group of people that are going to be able to share a little bit more uh, some of their food and, and, and give us a little bit more of a conversation. So who's coming up? Okay. Hi, Majuri. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Very excited to learn about the okra kind of chips. I'm going to try it. <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself while the others are coming? Okay, sure. Yeah. So this is Major oh is speaking. Okay. Majuri Wangari. Wangari. Hi. Do you want to introduce Okay, Ali, we're going to get Majuri to introduce herself and then uh, Wangari. All right. Okay. Okay, Ooh. so this is Majuri speaking. I'm dialing in from Kigali, Rwanda, but originally from Zimbabwe. So I'll be sharing about Zimbabwean food all the way down south. Very happy to be here. 
Welcome, thank you. And, and Wangari, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi everyone, excited to be here. My name is Wangari of the Farmer on Fire. I create exciting videos on YouTube about farming and I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to see you, Chef Ali. I hope you come to my farm one day. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And you've got to check out your videos. They're, they're great. I was watching one the other day. Um, and let's go. Let's go. Uh, uh, Divine, do you want to introduce yourself? Welcome, friend. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I know it's raining can there. You yeah, okay. go can you for hear it. Me? Yeah, good. Welcome, Divine. It's my name. Nice meeting you all. And uh, this is a very interesting session and very timely. Yeah, I'm Darling from Yaounde, Cameroon, the capital city. And uh, from Africa, for those who don't know Cameroon, and I'm actually one of the UN Food System Champion report. Over. Thank you. Thank you. Great to have you with us. And our, our last guest is uh, Gabrielle. Hello everyone, um, Gabriel Ogibel from Abuja, Nigeria, and I actually have uh, uh, lots of excitement in me because uh, this afternoon while I was having lunch, I remembered that uh, I'm coming for this uh, program, so I had to reserve some of my bills to, to share with you as well. Awesome. Why don't you start, Gabriel? Show us what you've got. What, what's your food? What have you bought? Awesome. Yeah, so here <laughs> is what I've got. Um, so it begins with this one. This is tiger nut, but um, it is tiger nut and um, date palm and, um, and coconut. So you have to blend them together and then you squeeze out the juice, no sugar. So it's very healthy as well. So you start with this at least before you begin to, uh, you jump onto the main course. So you see that this one? Of this one, but this is what I had this afternoon. Uh, what you have here is uh, is pounded yam, so it's yam that is pounded <laughs> basically. And just to show you what it looks like, you can literally eat this without a soup because it's yam. So, how we eat it is you just take like a little bite, yeah. and then you dip it. Dali, right? What do you call? Do you call that pop? Pounded yam. Pounded yam. Okay, cool. Yeah. You, you have to dip it in uh, in this soup. This is vegetable soup. Uh, what you have here is a uh, uh, water leaf and uh, spinach, and then uh, you have uh, some seafood. You know, fish, uh, stockfish, dried fish, periwinkle, crayfish, just all all sort of seafood. All right inside here if i dig deep i may find uh, one of them but i think i must have eaten eating them during lunch mm. so you take uh, a mold of this and then you kind of put it in the soup and then you eat very very nutritious wow i'm yeah. hungry <laughs> this is my lunch but i also came with this because i think uh, i want the um i want africans to see this very interesting meal. So what I have here is uh, well seasoned, just dry catfish. Wow. So you have to eat this with um, with this one. So please try not to bite your tongue when you pronounce this. Uh, this is ekpang kuko. Wow. What is that? So what you see here is. Um, is mashed yam and mashed cocoa yam. Oh, wow. And the beauty of this meal is that it takes hours to prepare. So you have like a small uh, dough of, of this mixture of yam and uh, cocoa yam, and then you wrap it around a vegetable. So you literally have to make cubes and cubes and cubes of this yam, and then you layer them in the pot, and then you boil them with all this other really nice gentlemen that the seafood also is here you know the periwinkle the stockfish so this is and the, the beauty of this meal i could share is that 
when you have the smell in your, in your mouth, it gives a, a sensation of a sprinkle from your tongue. It ejects saliva from your tongue. Once you have it in your mouth and you're chewing it, it triggers something in your salivary gland. And it's very interesting experience. Very interesting. Is it, so that's is that's it what I have here. And then once you this, then you, you complete it with this, uh, with this uh, tiger nut. And then maybe drink some water. Yeah, that's what I have. So, so if you're reading the, the chat, Gabrielle, um, I think there's a lot of people visiting you in Nigeria now. And um, they also need new laptops because you're, they're drooling all over their laptops because you're, you're, you're getting everyone excited. So um, we, I won't even start a conversation about jollof rice that Chef Ali started earlier because that might become problematic. But if we have time at the end, we might engage. Um, I know but, I'm going to eat in Nigeria now. <laughs> It's amazing. I've been interested. I love it. Pull a nail on the coffin eventually. I, 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 thank you so much. Okay, well, let's let's ask uh, uh, Majori. Do you want to show us what you've got? Oh yeah, sure. So I brought something very southern and uh, very Zimbabwean. I'm going to try and bring it on camera. Okay. So confirm when you can see it. Mm -hmm. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, okay. So I think this should be perfect, right? Okay, perfect. so this is a very healthy protein alternative, okay? We have been talking about having insects, edible insects. In Zimbabwe, in Southern Africa, we have been doing it already. So this is a native worm. It's called Mopane worm because the tree where they grow, they only grow on that specific tree. They are the worms. And... Uh, they are consumed in different ways. So you can make them into a stew and we, you eat with our own ugali. Of course, we also have ugali, but we just call it sadza. So you can eat it with ugali, but today I've decided to go a bit modern and make them into a salad. So you have mopane worm salad, which is very delicious. And uh, the good thing about this one, it's um, research says it's 58 to 60% protein. So that's double chicken. So it's a very nice alternative. Mm. And uh, not like any other insects, this, is, this one is not consumed because villagers don't have an alternative, but it has a superior taste. So it tastes amazing. Like every time I eat it, I'm just like, wow, how come the world doesn't know of this? It's very amazing and it's so sustainable. It also sustains livelihoods. This becomes a very major activity for women when it's in season. And it doesn't require a lot of uh, technical capacity to harvest and process. So it's already non-knowledge. I mean, I can go on and on, it's but you can it's Google a, it. It's, it's amazing. Worm. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. And, 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 and Majuri, you were just talking. So I also know that you uh, work with women and food and you have a big network. Just tell us quickly what, you know, one, one or two points around that. Okay, so yeah, I'm the value for her network facilitator. Value for her is basically Agra's flagship program to strengthen women in agribusiness. So we offer different programs, capacity building, also linking women farmers to productive resources and services. And we do a lot around advocacy. So, and we also create visibility for successful women. I will share in the link here also to invite the women on the on the platform who are in agribusiness to join our digital network, Value for Her Connect, to learn more about our Value for Her program. So that's all I can say for Value for Her, otherwise I'll need a day. <laughs> okay, no, that's great. But thank you, thank you, uh, Majuri. And thank you for sharing those, the, the, that such a delicacy. And I think the question you raise of why, I think is, is a good question. Why hasn't everyone not discovered it? But I think, you know, sometimes, I think then they have to just come to Zimbabwe, you know, and um, I, I think that's also a good thing. Sometimes I think if they get discovered, then everyone will have them. <laughs> <laughs> now, and then the other thing as to why is yeah. because that tree only grows in a certain region. So it's a bit drier. So that's why we we have this privilege. I mean, it's it's a blessing. <laughs> a privilege. Yeah, no, it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. Well, let's 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 go to uh, you, uh, Divine. What have you got? I saw you just shared online a photo of your, your dish, um, but tell us what you have. Uh, can you hear me? I you can see it. Can you see this? Uh, yes, we can. 
Oh my God! Uh, uh, I heard I heard a majority saying that it's uh, a food actually is double protein. Mine is the ten times protein. Uh, this is the snails. Uh, actually, they grow on notice and they are very very nutritious. I find them with some potato chips. Many people usually ask the mind, do you ever sleep? I tell them, I will start sleeping after 2030. I consume a lot of snails. You know, they give they a lot of they are so protonic that it replenishes all the strength and capacity of Western in the day. And um, it makes you to so healthy. And I remember Paul used to tell me, Divine, you need to rest. I tell him, no, I'm not resting. <laughs> I am eating good food. So I really feel that uh, it's very simple to prepare. It just sharp. And then the protein washed and some little ingredients, and that's fine. For 30 minutes, 20, 30, 20 minutes is done. In fact, I'm going to give you the contact of the of the chef. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. We're just losing you a bit, Divine. Yeah, we lost you. So thank you, Divine. I mean, the snails, that was amazing to see. Um, and thank you. Um, Wangari, do you want to go jump in? Show us. I saw on, on, on Twitter you were doing something. Um, but uh, I'm sure we'll see the video maybe. But please tell us, what have we got? Um, I think I tell you and I'm, I had a good lunch, so I just want something light for dinner. This is pumpkin sauce. It's um, just fried with tomato, and then you put that, and then you just have it as that. It's very filling, very nutri nutritious. And Wangari, Wangari, in we, we can't Hello? see your we can't yeah. see your camera. You've got it the wrong way. You're gonna flip it. Oh, sorry. Um, That's all right. So can you see it now? <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, we can see your roof. Oh, now what? we can see it. There we are. Yep. Okay. You see, lovely you see me? Oh can I come and dine with you? That's a lovely setup. Yes, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> These are strawberries from my farm, but it's also about um, bringing, reinventing back our traditional foods. Pumpkins were originally the food we grew up eating, especially in the village. And right now, you cook for anyone. My husband, you cook for him, and he's like, I don't eat pumpkins. So I had to look for a creative way because it's very nutritious. And I know in the West, you guys visit pumpkins, but I do share for you. We also confirm that seeds are used for stamina, and I think it's an amazing fruit back into our Kenyan cuisine and the world cuisine as well. Yeah, no, that's amazing, Wangari. And I think it's interesting when you do think about certain foods in certain parts of the world that are that have different associations with them. You know, like you know, in some parts of the world, one thing will be seen as a delicacy. In another part, people are like, "Oh, I don't know whether I should eat that." And um, it, it's kind of, it's interesting. And I think, you know, as you said, you've got to get creative um, and get creative with how you present that food. And I think today's conversation has been amazing because we've learned so much from uh, all this journey around food. And I think, you know, this is something that we should be doing more of. I think, you know, there's, we often have these conversations and we talk about products, but I've seen so many smiles in this conversation, so much joy, so many, you know, taste buds uh, drooling. And, and I think it's a great way to uh, really showcase the produce, uh, showcase the issues around health and biodiversity in a conversation around food. And I think it's great, you know, and it's, it's, it's delicious and fun. Um, you know, I'm gone, we've been to, all parts of Africa, almost, you know, it's been, uh, we've, we've, we've seen from the snails to the worms to, 
uh, catfish to uh, pumpkin to um, teff to like there's so many different ingredients I don't know Chef Ali what, what what's your thoughts my thoughts are basically amazing like pumpkin is something that we have down here I'm really going to make make a soup out of pumpkin it's quite a popular ingredient in Mombasa as well because we we make even a dessert with the pumpkin we make a pumpkin halwa we make pumpkin and coconut cream at the end of the day with a little bit of some sugar and caramel and just makes it delicious so it is uh, an ingredient that's readily available and uh, people love it at the end of the day so um, uh, it is something that is also nutritious and uh, it is available so Maybe upcountry people had it a lot and they feel like they don't want to have it. But down here at the coast, we love it. Like whenever we get it, we probably just add some coconut and we make a dessert out of it and everyone loves it. Super delicious. Um, uh, were we supposed to show our food, Paul? Like if we have any, yeah, I think I, I have. I, let's see what you've got, Chef Ali. And then I think we're going to have to, we're going to have to wrap. This has gone so fast that I, I think we're going to have to do this again. <laughs> um and have like two hours maybe and uh but let's let's chef ali show us what you've got so i have, I have a plate here and this is basically um you can see this is viazi viakara it's a popular uh potato dish that's a snack that's available uh on the street in mombasa and this is bajia i really want to talk about bajia so um bajia is basically um a snack made out of black eyed peas and black eyed peas is basically it's really we're losing you ali some onions garlic uh, coriander and uh it's made into a pest and once uh, it's a paste, you basically this will come from it's readily available. It's a coconut chutney with a little bit of some chili and a little bit of some lime juice, and then you just wanna eat it. Goodness, it's really good, crunchy, wow. and there's, at the same time, you, know, you are having something that is uh, delicious and sustainable because this is a black eyed peas. It's readily available and super delicious. Talking about this, this is just the viazis, which is popular potatoes, but at the same time. Delicious well, readily available every single day. When you walk down the street, you can buy this for literally maybe two shillings, and that would be a couple of cents, and it's just fantastic. It's amazing. So that's probably what I have today. I just got it from the street, and uh, this is basically supporting the uh, vendors who cook along the streets to make a living. So I uh, I just have something on my Insta story where the uh, mama is literally making them with the hand and frying them up, really delicious. And this is what we grew up eating every single day from school and uh, probably when we're headed home from school or at break time. It's amazing. It's delicious. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing, Chef Ali. And thank you to our panel. Um, you know, really appreciate Gabrielle, you taking us through Majuri, Wangari, uh, Divine. Um, thank you guys for, for bringing and sharing um, the, the ingredients and the stories. It's just amazing. I would love to have more time to talk, but I, I know that we are um, coming at time. So thank you guys. Um, so Chef Ali, you know, one of the things we're talking about now is uh, we're talking about this Good Food for All campaign. The summit has happened and um, it was yesterday. But, you know, the way I describe this summit is that was just the beginning. Um, this is where a lot of commitments were made and now we need to continue that work. We need to take that work forward. And I know that all of the people on this call are doing that in their local communities in different ways. One of the things we're wanting to do is to really launch a, a, a campaign where every Sunday people have healthy and nutritious food called with hashtag sustainable Sundays um, tied to good food for all. And the idea is you could get together and have this kind of conversation where you could share your meals um, and tag others. And I'd love to see more uh, food from across Africa. And so I'd encourage all our, our, our listeners to, to really do that, to tag their favorite food, um, sustainable Sundays on Sunday, and show us what you're eating. Um, talk to us about the ingredients and, and showcase what the producers are doing um, and how that can be healthy and sustainable for all. So I don't know, uh, Chef Ali, is that something you can be a part of? Definitely looking forward. I think it's interesting and yes, why not? Let's do this. Awesome. Well, um, I think we're going to hand back to Amanda. Are you there, Amanda? Mm -hmm. 
course, where well, would I go? Sorry, I was moving away from my screen, which had uh, a lot of drool. I was one of the people <laughs> drooling. <laughs> so Karibu when you viyazi. called upon me, I was just like, oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'm, I'm, now, I'm now on live. And Shafali is not making it any better. <laughs> because I that's amongst my favorite foods. Ah, and they say time moves fast when you're having fun. And I think this session has been the epitome of that. Who knew one hour could fly by so fast? Um, I was almost digging in at my screen, uh, learning about the different cuisines. Uh, snail that can be very delicious, which we don't think about. And I know there are many snails in Mombasa, Chef Ali. Um, and also just to echo uh, Paul Newman about the Sustainable Sunday football campaign. I got to learn about the Fiji cuisine and Chevali, it's very similar to what we eat at the coast. A lot of okra, they use coconut milk in almost everything, which is what we do as well. Um, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to give a vote of thanks. First, to our amazing moderators, Paul, Chevali, you've been spectacular. You've been amazing. You came and supported us in a twinkling of an eye, literally. Um, and you've done a stellar job. I was so entertained, I even forgot I should be coming back on again. I'd also like to thank all the panelists who took time to prepare food and make sure that you know you presented the very best from your local culture. I'd also like to thank very a very special thank you to Vanessa Adams. Uh, if you could just turn on your camera. Um, she's the lady who birthed this idea of favorite food. This is her brain child. Vanessa, we were actually enjoying good food at a restaurant. And she said, you know what? Why don't we have a favorite food event? And she challenged us and she pushed us and we did the Less than a week here we are with over hundreds of participants um, participating in this session, global attendance. So Vanessa, she's the powerhouse, she's the power engine, and a very special thank you to you. Um, and the youth who participated, the various groups, youth groups uh, the CSLN group, and everybody who has been here, the Afro team generation, Africa Secretariat, Thank you all very much. Without further ado, um, we can take up this discussion with Paul on propagating this, um, this agenda. Clearly, there's not enough time when it's all about food. So once again, thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Friday. I'm already starting mine right here. And bye bye. Thanks, Amanda. Bye. Thanks, Stephali. We're all coming to Mombasa for the next event. On your uh, Friday afternoon rooftop. On his rooftop. Karibu we'll Mombasa. There. On our rooftop. Let's do this. <laughs> All right. Merci à tous. Thank you, guys. Bye.